Hi everyone, it's Steven. It's March 16th. I'm getting ready for my AT through hike leaving in Georgia in two days on Friday. I'm going to start walking up towards Maine. I want to make a quick video going through what's in my kit, um, what I'm going to be carrying for the trip. I've got about 91 items here, including what I'm wearing and what's in this bag. Um, I'm going to start by weighing this bag, just showing you what that is. Um, it's loaded up for winter. It's about nights are going down into the teens down in Georgia right now. So I have a few heavier items to make sure I'm comfortable in the cold. So. First of all, weighing what's in here, this is my base weight with no food or water. And it's coming out to 9.2 pounds. Um, I have my food here in a odor-proof bag, an op sack. Um, it sits right here on the top of my gear. And then I have water bottles here that go in these sleeves. So I'm gonna start breaking down what's actually in this bag. Um, I made these water bottle sleeves. They're basically based off of the Z-Packs design. I'm um, carrying them on the front of my straps. I have a hard time reaching back to my side pockets back here and here to try to get my water bottles out. So keeping them in the front is much better access for me. So water bottles in the front there, got a little retention strap on them. Um, so that if I'm moving a lot or taking my pack off, they're not falling out. Um, very easy to pull out and drink. I'm also on the outside of my pack. In the front, I've got my, my front utility pouch accessory. Um, so this over the last couple of days, um, takes care of a lot of things actually i'm uh, set up so that i don't need to carry anything in my pockets because you'll see my shorts don't have any pockets so my phone sits right here in the back of this pouch um carrying it this way gives me access to the usb ports to connect to my headphones so i can listen to music uh and so on uh, and this little strap right here keeps everything secure in place so again when i'm taking off my bag or slinging it around my phone's not bouncing out of there so slot for my phone right in the back there google pixel 6 uh, pro in the case um, pretty basic android smartphone there and then on this on this pouch right here we got a couple other things so i've been carrying this bandana for thousands of miles um not quite as light as like a lighter load towel or something like that but um, it'll wipe up water it'll help clean me off as a washcloth uh, tie it into a splint or something if i absolutely need to so um just general use bandana there little spray bottle of hand sanitizer. Got a little bit more in the bag to refill this, and of course I can refill it as I go. This little pocket here, we've got um, this little cord, which is a belt that I use when I'm wearing my poncho to help keep my poncho tucked in. Um, can also use it in my tarp to help secure things, um, tie things up above my head and so on. Got a little teach tree chapstick up here. Um, just really itty bitty chapstick right there should be enough for me. Generally don't go through the entire thing. Um, that's it for the front. On the side here, I've got this little spoon holster. So a little retention in the top to keep my spoon from bouncing out. But this just um, makes it really easy to grab my spoon. Sometimes I eat while I walk. Um, that way I can just finish up my meal and secure my spoon right here without having to stop my bag. But a little slots on the side here. You can pull out this uh, Tokes long handle titanium spoon. Um, there's Everyone between the long handle and the short handle, I like the long handle because it can get down into like a, uh, a tuna bag or something like that without putting my dirty hands in there. So I have a little waterproof zipper on here. This entire thing isn't really waterproof, but water resistant. Um, when I'm wearing my poncho, my poncho is going to be going um, over the top of this anyway, which would generally be protecting my phone and all the things in here. So inside this pouch, I've got a bunch of stuff um, similar to the spoon. By having my Sawyer Squeeze water filter in here and my Dirty Water Evernew bag, uh, 900 milliliters, this allows me to fill water um, really easily when I come across a stream. I prefer to keep my water bottles clean um, so I can uh, fill this bag up, filter it and drink directly from it, or filter it into one of the bottles on my shoulder strap as I'm walking. I um, don't necessarily need to stop to get water. Also in here, we've got the NU25 headlamp, um, very popular with a lot of hikers, weighs bar barely anything. Um, swapped out the cable mod for this little 1 16th shock cord, and then of course this is rechargeable, has the red light, white light. Um, it's worked great for me so far. Got a tiny little DCF bag with my um, cards, my ID, and some cash in here. Um, Ziploc works fine, but I happen to have the DCF bags, and those have always been good for me. Um, got more, I got several of these little dropper bottles. This one with the red happens to be um, insect repellent. Um, you'll, you saw the 
The hand sanitizer earlier, I also have sunscreen um, in those as well, and I can carry uh, Dr. Bronner's soap as well. Um, Bic Mini Lighter, don't plan on using this, not starting any fires, but it gives me the option if I need to in a survival scenario. Also good for when I'm making gear repairs, cutting off straps, um, little pieces of shock cord or guy liner or whatnot, you can clean up those ends. Um, this is my cutting implement for the trip, these little mini shear scissors, got the protective cover, um, sharp tiny little scissors, good enough for making gear repairs, cutting tape, um, cutting luco tape for um, injuries or things like that. I almost never find I need anything more than that. Um, the smallest random little lens cloth that I have, obviously I'm wearing glasses, so I'm going to be wearing these uh, military issue basic glasses. Um, so I don't have to deal with contacts or anything like that, but just have a tiny lens cloth to keep those clean. I tend to get them very sweaty as I'm hiking. And I think the last thing in this pouch is my headphones. Um, so these are plug foam guardians. Um, painted them so it's easier to tell which side is which, but these are um, headphones and earplugs. So um, really nice just to put those in to be able to sleep and of course just to listen to an audiobook or something while I'm on the trail. Um, because of my Pixel 6 doesn't have a headphone jack, then I have the USB-C to 8th inch audio converter. So that was all on that little front pocket. I'm um, going to the outside of the back of the bag. Um, here I have the Z-Pax umbrella. Um, just put a little bit of cord to attach it on here and a little bit of bungee on the bottom. Um, so really nice, obviously, what I'm carrying to cover my head. Um, my tarp solution, my poncho tarp doesn't have a hood to it, so this is one way to keep my head dry, the other being the hat that's right here. Um, I can also use this as part of a wind block for my shelter. Um, so just kind of a general all-around good item to have. In this big mesh pocket right here on the outside of the bag, um, I have my steak bag here. So in these steaks I have um, a couple of the MSR mini groundhogs, so pretty popular choice for lightweight hikers. Um, these little guys with the trefoil design, um, a little bit more holding power than the other ones I have in here. These are some that I got off of someone on Reddit. I think it's a Rockbox ATX, made them on the MYOG subreddit. Um, but these are little carbon fibers with these little button head tops. Um, weigh almost nothing. It's uh, uh, 0.08 ounces each. Um, these tend to hold just fine in good soil. I'm a little bit challenging if the soil's hard or not too great if it's sandy, but with the tarp and guy line options, um, trees and so on, um, I, I have some options. So a little uh, z packs steak bag for all of those. Um, like I've mentioned in here, my hat. So I've been wearing the Sunrunner hat um, for a while now from outdoor research. It weighs about two and a half ounces. Um, really like the tarp on the back. Um, between this and a few other things you'll see in my kit, I can have basically full skin coverage at all times, so I basically don't need to wear any sunscreen to keep my uh, skin safe. Um, yes, it's very dorky, but um, it works really well for me. It has a little retention thing right here, so when it's very windy, it will keep that um, cape down around my neck. So, Sunrunner hat. I think that's it for this front pocket. I'm going to the side pocket. Um, 20 for a cold soap jar. I have a couple options. I also have the white Smith ones, but this one is actually works just fine for me. Um, it's a good volume for me. So um, soaking my food in here every day, um, usually breakfast and dinners, um, just putting whatever mashed potatoes, instant rice, um, pasta sides or so on in here um, with some water, hiking with that for a little bit, letting it reconstitute and eating that. Um, that's the only thing on that side right now. On the opposite side, I've got some body glide, um, bigger container than I probably need, but I'm overweight. My thighs are fat right now, so this is helping a lot with produ producing the chafing. Um, hopefully, once I get going, um, I get a little bit thinner or my skin toughens up. This isn't necessary. I could probably try to transfer to a smaller container, but um, this is only about uh, two ounces as it is, so it's not the end of the world. Um, a water scoop just cut from a gas station Deer Park water bottle. Um, Again, not strictly necessary, but this is really great for scooping water when it's a really small, um, shallow source. Getting water directly into the bag can be a hassle. So scooping this or even putting it underneath a um, spring or something that's running down to fill this up and dumping it in the bag is just so much easier for getting water. Um, a few more things on the outside of the bag. At the top of the shoulder strap here, sewed a little custom pocket that holds this Garmin InReach Mini. You might recognize the antenna. So take off this little retention strap and the garment comes out. 
So carrying this um, gives me my GPS location. Um, not super necessary for navigating the IT, the AT in most scenarios. Um, generally, we'll be able to just follow the trail and follow the blazes. Um, but we'll be able to know where I am, so I'm able to send my wife a message every night with where I'm camping. That way, um, if things go really wrong and we end up in a search and rescue scenario, um, I have at least a fix within the past 24 hours. Um, so it allows me to send messages out over the, using Iridium satellites when there's no cell service. Um, allows me to send an SOS and get um, somebody to come and find me if that ends up being the case. So I um, plan on using this only about once a day, um, but definitely worth it for the peace of mind. I think the last thing we have here on the outside is my back pad. So for my winter kit, I have this, um, I have the z pack or excuse me, the um, Thermarest Z-Lite uh, folding closed cell phone pad. This one's cut down to be six cells. Um, and they come in different sizes, but this six cells is long enough for my torso. Um, in some cases, I would sleep just on this. Um, has the reflective, more thermal side on this side. It has a little snaps here for being able to hook to my wife's pad. Not relevant in this scenario, but not removing those just for the trip. Um, so the way my kit is set up right now, I sleep very cold in the winter. So using this on top of my air pad that's inside um, helps get my temperature, my insulation up higher. Um, and then, so like I said, it sits on the back, so that provides the cushion for my pack, which is uh, frameless in and of itself. When it gets warmer out, I can swap that out, have a little two cell version that I use as a sit pad. Of course, I can sit on this as well as a sit pad, um, but have a little two cell version or the version that Z Pack sends with their bag, which is even smaller still, and that still provides that same function, cushioning the back. Um, the thinner ones allow me to pull the back a little bit closer to myself, which is a little bit more of a comfortable ride. Um, the bag itself, z -Pak's, um sub and Nero in the Robic fabric, so um, not the Dyneema, which you'll see on a lot of my other gear. Um, a little bit of a more traditional backpack fabric. I made a bunch of small modifications. You saw the little clasp here to hold my umbrella on with the bungee on the bottom down here. Um, a little stretchy loops here to dry socks and things like that. And then you saw the custom water bottle pockets, the um, Garmin pocket, and the... Uh, utility pouch that I carry in the front. So it's the Robic bag, all those little modifications um, up the weight from about nine ounces to I think 11 ounces, but it's definitely worth it for the convenience of getting to all those things. Um, I can grab almost everything I need on a day-to-day -day basis, as you just saw, without having to stop, open up my pack, or reach around behind me. So um, getting into the pack, got the roll top closure, helps keep a little bit of water out. Um, here we have an enlightened equipment um, Torrid, so a non-down synthetic uh, puffy jacket. Um, depending on the weather, of course, it's going to be in different locations. I might just cram it in the mesh on the outside of my bag. Um, if it's rainy but not cold, it's going to be inside um, the dry bag that I'm about to get to. And then, of course, if it's cold, it's probably going to be on my body. But um, I just changed over from the Ghost Whisperer for a warm jacket. Um, this is a little bit heavier, doesn't pack down as well, but it's definitely been a warmer solution for me. It's a little bit big, um, I've gotten a little bit bigger, um, so we'll see if that's the appropriate size for me at the end of the trip, but for right now it's doing great for me. So I'm getting down into the bag. Um, the next thing is on the front and back of the bag I have um, my ground sheet. So this is the window covering, um, it's like duck brand window covering that's cut into basically a body size piece. Um, reinforced with packing tapes on the ends. It's very strong except for if you start a rip on the sides it'll rip right through. So just putting a little one inch strip of packing tape around the outside makes this very strong, works as a ground sheet. Um, weighs almost nothing. Let's see, uh, one and three quarters ounces. Um, does great for keeping the dirt off of my bag and all that stuff. Gives me a decent amount of room to spread out all my gear when I'm stopped when I'm camping. Um, not necessarily necessary when I'm running with the bivy, but it helps clean, keep my bivy cleaner when it's in the winter. And when it's nicer out, I won't necessarily use or have my bivy, and so that's what's keeping me off the ground. Um, next is my shelter. So right here we see a third of an ounce DCF uh, material, so lightweight, um, strong, water, uh, waterproof. So this myself with some fabric from Ripstop. So it's just a um, normal running width of the fabric, so about 54 inches wide, and then cut a little bit longer than my body. Um, added guy outs and ties to the corners. 
Um, didn't originally have the clips, but transitioning from using this as a poncho to a tarp, it is way easier when you're cold and wet and freezing to clip these little clips onto each of the corners in the middle of the long edges um, to get my lines for doing that. Opening it up, I got a couple other features. I'll uh, try to make a video on the trail showing how it actually works when it's set up and, and how it wears and so on, but you can of course wear it as a poncho. Uh, when I'm stopped, I've got a couple loops here to attach my eyeglasses or whatever I need to hang from the inside. This also raises up my bivy off my face or supports my um, head net, my mosquito net that protects my face. I'm on the inside. On the opposite side, I have a loop that um, goes up to the trekking pole when it's pitched into an A-frame. This allows me to have a little bit of fabric coming down and basically it gives me a closed foot box. So I'm covered on at least three sides, like 270 degree coverage around my body um, to prevent the water and wind from coming in. So a nice little um, addition to have this extra loop here, um, a little bit up from the back end of the fabric to raise that up. And then lastly, the poncho aspect of the poncho tarp is just this Velcro covered slit right here. So in the tarp configuration, this goes basically from my waist down to my knees. If I want to use this as a poncho, I can pull this back. If, uh, the Velcro opens up and there's a slit that runs all the way along. I can fold that inside Velcro back to itself so that those loops aren't um, scratching on my neck and just pop that right over my head. Um, augment that with my hat or with my umbrella. Um, use that little stretchy band we saw before to wrap it around my waist to keep it from flying all around, especially if it's windy. And that basically gives me coverage um, from my neck all the way down to about my mid thigh to my knees and most of the way down my arms. So depending on the weather, um, my forearms are getting a little bit wet, my calves are getting a little bit wet. Um, but generally gives me pretty good coverage for basically weighing nothing at all. Um, so that was just the stuff that was on top of my bag. We talked about my food bag at the beginning, which would be sitting up there at the top uh, above or below my jacket outside of my dry bag. So the next thing in here is what I use as a pack liner or a dry bag. This is a Z Pax Z DCF large rectangular roll bag with a roll top closure. Not exactly designed as a pack liner, but it actually fits this bag perfectly. And seeing as I only need to waterproof maybe the bottom half of this bag at most, um, it fits just fine. So um, open up that roll, roll top closure. My clothes bag in here. This is actually the only piece of sewn nylon I have, but this is just a Cedar Summit um, clothes bag. And the first thing in here isn't actually clothes at all, but this is a um, GAM 12 Leap Speed Cube. So um, this is my one luxury item. This is about the lightest and fastest cube out there. Um, so I've found thousands of hours of entertainment. Um, with that, I can do that while I'm hiking, when I'm walking, I can um, really apply myself to it and kind of work on getting faster and so on. Um, so a lot of value out of that one piece of gear. Similarly, a little cork roller ball from Rology. These weigh about an ounce, um, really good for rolling out muscles. I use them on my calves mostly, but um, can get them up over my shoulder and so on. Um, definitely worth the wait just to roll up muscles after the end of a long day. So we get into the actual clothes in the clothes bag. Um, this is a Terramar Thermosilk top layer. Um, so basically nothing at all. You can see through that very easily, but um, this gives me another option for my shirt and gives me long sleeves um, for sleeping only just to try to keep myself a little bit warmer inside of my quilt. Um, with that for the winter, I have the Patagonia, Patagonia Capilene um, base layer leggings here. Um, so a little bit heavier of an option, make sure that my legs are covered since I'm sleeping in my puffy most of the time, my top half is uh, much warmer. The Capilene here gives me that warmth the bottom layer. I have the matching uh, Terramar silk for the legs if it gets warmer and I want that or of course I can uh, leave it all behind if it's that warm that I don't need either. I have some um, Outdoor Research Versaline gloves. So I have bad circulation, my hands get really cold. I usually start with these in the morning on cold mornings um, just until I get going and then stash them somewhere. They've got this little zipper pocket on the back and in there there's a waterproof uh, liner that goes around the outside. Um, so that's really nice, obviously, to just have both options for just a warm and a waterproof layer for the gloves. Um, I've been really happy with those. Got a face mask, pretty self-explanatory, going into town and so on. Just a basic random cotton one. Um, these are the socks that I'm wearing. So I have the darn tough, lightweight, um, crew cut hiker socks, uh, lifetime warranty. Um, most good majority of folks are using these. Um, pretty self-explanatory, good hiking sock. 
Um, these are the shorts that I'm wearing, so I've got one on right now, and this is the second pair. So these are just the um, Ranger panties of, of US Army fame. Um, weigh almost nothing, have no pockets, so the need for that utility pouch that I've shown before, it has the mesh liner in there. Um, I can swim in them, I can hike in them. Um, they are short shorts, but uh, they are very effective for just um, being comfortable, lightweight while moving. I was talking about sun protection earlier, so um, some sun sleeves here. Um, it just covers from the top of my bicep down to my wrist. It's got little thummy holes right here. Um, so that covers everything down to my fingertips. Um, so when I'm in hot beating sun between this, between the Sunrunner hat and the parasol, um, basically keeping the sun off everything except for just my fingertips and then my knees and below. Um, Lightened equipment, copper field, rain pants. Um, so these weigh almost nothing. They look and feel basically like a trash bag. Um, but very strong um, and just kind of keep keep some of the air next to my legs, keep myself a little bit warmer in the wind. Sea to Summit Mosquito Head Net. Um, obviously throw this over my head, the, um, um, keep the bugs off with the Sunrunner hat. The brim really helps keep this away from my face so it's much more comfortable. Uh, that's just my water bottles falling off the table. Um, but yeah, this works well while moving, having that hat on, or I can just pinch a little bit up with that elastic cord, pull it off my face with that loop on the bottom of my tarp and sleep with just this. Um, between this and my quote, have full body coverage from insects at night without necessarily having to use my bivy or after I uh, send home my bivy. Um, extra pair of socks that actually shouldn't be in here. And then compression leggings. Um, so Jury's out just a little bit on this one, but I found that putting these on when I sleep um, between my on my calves um, helps with my recovery a lot. Um, I've been enjoying using those. We'll see how they go when I'm putting in the miles every single day, but that's been a pretty nice thing. So that's it for the clothes bag. The last thing in this, uh, or not quite the last thing, this video is going to be longer than I want it to be, but apologies. Thanks for sticking with me if you're interested. Uh, I've got these two of these Z-Packs phone pouches. Lexi did a little bit of artwork on them to help me tell them apart because before they were the same plain black bag. So this one with the pink on it is my electronics bag. I've got uh, Anchor Nano Pro dual charger, two of the USB-C ports, puts out about, I think it's 30 amps, uh, 40 amps to charge multiple devices. The main thing that I'm charging is this um, Anchor NV 10,000 milliamp hour battery, one of the most popular options as far as weight to um, capacity. Um, like you did art on here as well, so we've got a little mountain on there. So to tell it apart, because this is the most popular battery, may have it crowded with outlets with other people, um, but this should give me enough power to get from town to town um, and the option to recharge it relatively quickly in a few hours and get moving if that's, if that's what's um, called for. Um, two real short USB-C to USB-C cables. Each one has a different adapter on the end. So USB-C to USB-C, of course, takes care of my phone and the battery. Um, putting on the micro attachment on here will charge that um, Garmin inReach that we saw a minute ago, as well as the NU25 headlamp. On this one, we've got the Garmin watch adapter here. So this watch adapter will charge this Garmin Instinct, which um, I like to have to track my mileage, um, see what I'm doing for the day, get a kind of... Um, instant readout of like elevation and stuff like that. So can top that off real quick using that cable there. Um, just a little desiccant pouch to keep the stuff in here dry. And then the other thing that I want to keep dry and warm is my Sawyer squeeze. So just a little plastic baggie to put my Sawyer squeeze in. If it's below freezing at night, I'm taking my phone, my battery, and my Sawyer squeeze, putting those all in my quilt stuff sack and putting them in with me while I sleep to make sure none of those things freeze so that the batteries aren't losing capacity or that my um, Sawyer squeeze isn't rupturing and then becoming useless. So that's that electronics pouch. Other pouch here is my ditty bag. Um, so a variety of things in here. Um, we've got the little thumbprint toothbrush from Lightsmith. Um, got a little mini jar from Lightsmith. This one has desit in it also for anti-shave reasons. Um, this one right here is tooth powder. So I made this homemade tooth powder with like baking soda and um, bentonite clay and so on. Um, these two together will take care of my teeth for a very long time. I um, just need a tiny drop of the powder, then I'm not carrying toothpaste, having to refill it or so on. Um, sunscreen in the little mini bottle, like I said, I don't need very much of that. I'm a little bit more of the hand sanitizer, I'm using that multiple times a day so I can put this into that um, squirt bottle. Fisher Space Pen insert, so in case I do need to write anything, um, the inside of the pen right there. 
and these little folding uh, nail clippers um, so, so I can manage my nails as I'm going. Um, got a first aid bag. We've got um, stereo strips in here, ibuprofen, Benadryl, Imodium, um, band aids, Luco tape for managing blisters, nonstick gauze, and that's pretty much it for first aid. The other bag in here is repair kit. Um, I've got an extra cap for a water bottle, um, an extra o ring. I've replaced my Sorry Squeeze o rings with ones from the hardware store that stay in there better, but here's one more just in case I do lose it. Um, there's a needle in here and a little bit of dental floss for any sewing type repairs. Um, repair stuff for my air mattress. Um, tenacious tape for some gear repairs like my backpack. And then the DCF tape um, that works really well for fixing the quilt among, or the um, tarp among other things. So that's my repair kit. And that's it for the ditty bag. So now the last thing that's in this dry bag. Once I have pack here, we'll take out the whole dry bag. Um, this is what I call my sushi roll. In this little roll right here, you'll see the Thermarest New Air um, x Light air mattress. Um, never was really an air mattress person, but I think I'm a convert now as I'm getting older. Um, more concerned about sleeping comfortably and especially for a longer duration. Um, so this is a regular size pad. In the winter, I'm using both pads together. Um, and, then in, and then in the warmer weather, just wearing this, just sleeping on this. Um, rolled up in here, I have my bivy sack. The, Mount Laurel Designs Super Ultralight Bivy. Um, uh, as you can see, I just have this all rolled together, but that bivy um, keeps some of the wind off me when it's colder weather, when I'm underneath that tarp. Um, of course, gives me a bug protection, splash protection from the water. Um, pillow, so inflatable Trekology pillow. Um, I know a lot of people don't think that the dedicated pillow is necessary. Um, when it's really cold out, I'm wearing almost everything you saw in the clothing bag, so I don't really have anything left to put underneath my head. Um, and for me, being able to sleep well relies a lot on having good spine, uh, neck, and head alignment. So using this on top of my pad, um, I usually tuck the rest of my backpack in between the two to give it a little bit more loft. That helps me a lot with being comfortable when I sleep. The last thing in here in this um, z pack long stuff sack is my Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt. So this is my 20 degree quilt for winter um, and like the 7D and the 10D material. A 950 power fill and then the straps which help keep it in place on the pad preventing drafts um, so a really good option for the quilt i also have a 50 degree of the same quilt the enigma um, that i can swap to in warmer weather so my sleep system and the dry bag that we saw and the last thing in this bag is my ursac so um Good stewardship is important to me, so making sure we're protecting the bears and the wildlife out there. I don't want someone to be uh, an animal to be euthanized because of um, my careless actions. So there's definitely areas on the trail where bears are an issue. So the Ursac to protect my food and protect those animals. Um, it's got that uh, like Kevlar type weave protection, um, cinches up real tight with that food bag that you saw a minute ago. Um, tie that to a tree and then I don't have my uh, food on me when I'm sleeping and they're protected when they're if they're trying to get in there if they can even smell through that odor proof sack. just wanted to briefly cover what I'm actually wearing. Um, so I have the Arcteryx Cormac hiking tee. Um, basically the same as all the other hiking tees I've had. This one just a comfortable lightweight quick drying fabric. I mentioned the um, basic military glasses that I have. Um, these are my Leckie Micro Vario Trek poles. They happen to be the women's models because I'm not particularly tall, which means a little bit less material that's in, on the inside being wasted. I um, use them to support uh, my tarp, and depending on the configuration of how I pitch it. And then also um, a bit of an improvised weapon, mostly for scaring off a wild animal um, if that comes to it. So waving those around, yelling at a bear and so on. Um, I have some outdoor research pants, these very stretchy hiking pants that I climb in a lot. Um, don't actually know the model for those. Underneath I have the ranger panty um, shorts or underwear serving both functions. Um, but that's my primary bottom half when it's warmer out. And then for my feet, I have the Brooks Cascadia 15s um, as my shoe, a lightweight trail running shoe. And then dirty girl gaiters around the ankles prevent stuff from getting in for my um, shoes. So that's it for my what I'm carrying on my body. So that's everything in my kit. Um, like I said, I'll try to post a couple videos from the trail of some of the gear in action. I'll let you know if anything changes as far as what I swap out. Um, but thanks for sticking with me um, and thanks for your support.